We use a lot of euphemisms when we talk about death, you know? People say things like, you know, I lost my father. Ah, he'll turn up. <laughs> you gotta stay optimistic with people like that. Give them reason to hope. Have you checked the dumpster out back? <laughs> he used to like to take a nap in there. Keep it upbeat. Now, there's something else that uh, is said after uh, a death, but this one involves belief, which is where I begin to have big problems. <laughs> this one happens after the funeral, after the burial, back at the house. Back at the house where the family and friends and the loved ones of the deceased are having some food and drink and they're enjoying some warm reminiscences of the person who passed away. Sooner or later, someone is bound to say the following, uh, especially after a few drinks. You know, I think he's up there now, smiling down at us. And I think he's pleased. Now, first of all, there is no up there. for people to be smiling down from. <laughs> it's poetic, it's quaint, and I guess for superstitious people it provides a little comfort, but it doesn't exist. But if it did, if it did, and if someone did somehow survive death in a non-physical form, I personally think he'd be far too busy with other celestial activities than to be standing around paradise, smiling down. <laughs> On live people. What kind of a fucking eternity is that? And why is it no one ever says, I think he's down there now, <laughs> smiling up at us? <laughs> Apparently, it never occurs to people that their loved ones might be in hell. <laughs> your parents could be in hell right now. Your parents and your father for sure. <laughs> oh, shit, hell is full of dads. Full of dads. Even the ones who took you to the ball game just for beating the shit out of you once too often and fucking the neighbor lady and fucking the neighbor dog and who knows maybe even fucking the ups man we'll never know what mischief dad was up to parents in heaven parents in hell excuse me kind of gives me a nice feeling you know grandparents in hell Picture that. Picture your grandmother in hell. Baking pies without an oven. And if someone were in hell, I doubt very seriously he'd be smiling. I think he's down there now, screaming up at us. And I think he's in severe pain. People just refuse to be realistic. They don't like to be realistic. People would rather stroke themselves, you know? Oh, they like to stroke themselves, don't they? Stroke themselves, they stroke each other, they get stroked. They stroke the boss, the boss strokes them. Everybody strokes everybody. It's nothing but a big stroke job in this country. The government strokes you every day of your life. Religion never stops stroking you. Big business gives you a good stroke, and it's one big transcontinental cross-country red, white, and blue stroke job. Do you know? You know what the national emblem of this country ought to be? Forget that bald eagle. The national emblem of this country ought to be Uncle Sam standing naked at attention, saluting, and seated on a chair next to him, the Statue of Liberty jerking him off. <laughs> that would be a good symbol for the United Strokes of America. It's all bullshit, folks. It's all bullshit and it's bad for you. Now, speaking of dead people in heaven, 
There are some people who not only believe that their dead parents in heaven can see them, okay? Okay. They honestly believe that their dead parents in heaven can help them. You've heard these people, I'm sure. They honestly somehow believe that their dead parents in heaven can intercede with God on their behalf to gain favors for the living. I come from a Catholic home. I heard this shit. <laughs> they sit there in the chair with the fucking rosary and they look at you like this, you know, and they say, oh, my dad, my dad was looking out for me. He, he was looking out. I don't know how he got me out of that jam, but he got me out. Oh, my mom, my mom was in surgery with me. She was in, I could feel her presence in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fine. Like the people who die have nothing better to do than to run the heavenly branch of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> now, if people want to believe this kind of stuff, it's fine with me, let them believe it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to disabuse anyone of their, dis of their beliefs, but I have a question about this. A question that involves logic. Let's suppose it's true. Let's allow the proposition that somehow dead parents in heaven can help their living children. Fine. So, we got a family living on earth, father and mother and four kids, family of six, good family, nice family, doing all the right things, having a good time, making all the right moves. And the, the, the parents go away on a weekend trip and get killed in an accident. And the children, of course, survive. So now, according to this theory, these two people go to heaven and they start helping their four living children, helping them with everything they need, helping them with their science projects, with their SAT scores, helping them get a good school and get a, get a nice job and get a promotion and a raise and someone to marry and they all grow up. These four kids now grow up and have children of their own. And let's say that all four of these now grown children also die at the same time. Just for the sake of argument. Let's say there's an explosion at Thanksgiving dinner. And these four die, but their children survive because they were seated at the children's table. So. So now, according to the theory, these four go to heaven and they start helping their living children. But what happens to the original two? What happens to the grandparents? Do they just go off duty now? What do they do? Are there some, is there a retirement program up there? Are there some activities for these people? Shuffleboard, pinball, online poker? There must be something they can do. Or do they have to remain on duty indefinitely? Do they have to keep on helping their living descendants forever and ever and ever? Is that what heaven's all about, helping the living? When do you get to just lie back on a cloud and take a fucking harp lesson? You know what I mean? Because, because people have been dying, people have been dying for a long, long time. There's been a lot of dead motherfuckers. Did you know that? Yes, you knew there's a lot of dead motherfuckers. We've had 100 billion people live on this earth. That's what the experts say. 100 billion people have lived here. So let's say half of them died and went to heaven. That's 50 billion people up there. That's a pretty crowded place. It must get pretty busy and pretty hectic up there. And God must get pretty pissed off with all these favors. Yeah, yeah, I know. Spelling test Tuesday. Get the fuck out of here. What you think? Get the fuck out of here. You know, even God can go on sensory overload. That's why he wanted one day off a week. Christians gave him Sunday. Jews gave him Saturday. Muslims gave him Friday. God has a three-day weekend. <laughs> which is probably just what he needs. Now, just a couple other questions about this whole theory. Suppose you die without having any children. Who do you help? <laughs> Strangers? It would be nice. Suppose you're an adopted child. Who helps you? Your biological mother? She doesn't even know where the fuck you live. <laughs> Suppose you kill your parents. Would they help you? I'll guarantee you Mr. and Mrs. Menendez are not helping those two boys. No.